We're live, coming to you from downtown Charlotte, North Carolina. So good to see all of you here today. Some of you joining in here on the good old Periscope. I'll give you a chance for some of you to go ahead and, and come in. Tell you what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the importance of joy. Hey, KC, how you doing? I want to talk about the importance of joy, and I want to read a verse to you from uh, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Now, to me, that is a pretty, pretty remarkable statement. Uh, the Lord didn't say, you've forsaken me, the lawgiver, although I'm sure that would be true. He didn't say, you've forsaken me, the Lord of hosts, although I'm sure that's probably true too. But what he said was, the two evils his people had committed were forsaking him as the fountain and providing for themselves a method of capturing water or preserving the life of God. Now, the interesting thing about uh, the fountain is the fountain really in many places in the scripture speaks of joy. Um, and, and I see one of the things that the Lord is saying is that joy is so, so important. Um, I've got a quote here from Pierre Tellard de Chardin. He's probably Roman Catholic, Catholic from years and years ago. But he said joy is the infallible sign of the presence of God. And um, we also have a verse of scripture in 1 Peter 1.8. Um, let me read that. I'm turning to it. Thank you for being patient. Hebrews, James, and Peter. 1 Peter 1.8 says, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Another translation says joy unspeakable and full of glory. And one of the things that bothers me is it's a sad fact that what was commonplace in the New Testament era in our church in our day is considered to be extreme. And what I mean by that is that kind of joy, that kind of inexpressible, unspeakable joy that the disciples and the apostles knew firsthand. You find it in Acts chapter 2 um, at the outpouring of the Spirit, the, the day when Pentecost had fully come. Um, you also um, realize, too, that uh, Jesus himself was called a drunkard. And I believe the reason he was called a drunkard was the Bible tells us his anointing was an anointing of joy above his brethren. Jesus was an amazingly joyful person. Um, you know, joy is can, can be called the language of hope or the expression of hope. Uh, Romans 15, 13, now, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. When you've got uh, a belief structure that um, is accurate, you're filled with joy and peace. And when you're filled in joy and peace, you abound in hope. Anyway, it, it's quite remarkable. I really think we need to pursue the Lord seriously. <laughs> it's funny. We need to pursue the Lord seriously about being happy. I think one of the problems in America is so many people were raised by parents who weren't happy. And I think it's a shame. I think uh, knowing Jesus should make us happy. I, I heard a guy say, God never promised to make us happy. Well, that's crazy. The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Um, a sad Christian is a confused Christian. A happy Christian is one that has understood Jesus has already won for us the victory. He's not going to win. He's going to come back and show everybody he already won, but he's already completed everything that needs to be done. But what he wants us to do is be so hungry for who he is and what he can do that we will be consumed with his power and his presence. So anyway, this is just a short exhortation. Um, I have one other thought. Jesus promised the disciples 
that the Holy Spirit would come. What would you think that would look like? He said he was going to be a helper, a comforter, an advocate. Uh, but he, the Holy Spirit was called the promise of the Father. So what would you expect the promise of the Father to look like? Here's what the promise of the Father looked like when he came. Powerfully intoxicated, joy-filled, spiritually drunken apostles who were no longer afraid of their enemies and had the power of the Holy Spirit and a level of joy and intoxication that enabled them to conquer the world in so many ways. So, anyway, God bless you guys. Hey, hello from Russia. Great to see you all the way from Russia. Let me see, that's Vladimir Putin. Vladimir, I did not realize that you were a fan of mine, but it's awesome to be recognized and appreciated by the president of Russia. So, anyway, God bless you guys, and we'll talk to you again.